The idea to do this story, the night at Villa Diodati on the shore of Lake Geneva, came from Maxine Alderton, the writer. She's a fan of, of Mary Shelley and of Byron and of that whole period and of, of their writings. Something to awaken thrilling horror. Yes, Mrs. Shelley. The first science fiction novel came from this night. So we just thought, what amazing place to take our characters. Modern sci-fi meets the original sci-fi. There is nothing to be afraid of. Writing an episode set in 1816 does require a lot of research. I looked at diaries, letters, found as many biographies as I could. Quality historical experience, that gold. On the night that inspired Frankenstein. I think the thing that struck me most when Max started talking about it was how young they were you know, um, and, and their ages at that time. And, and Byron in his mid-twenties was the oldest one there. I'm intensely flattered you're familiar with my work, Mrs. Doctor. Just Doctor is fine. Mary, at this point in time, is 18. She eloped with her husband-to-be, Percy Bysshe Shelley, when she was only 16. She's traveled extensively abroad. And at this point in time, she's come to Switzerland with her stepsister, uh, because her stepsister is very interested in Lord Byron. Byron is mad, bad and dangerous to know. He's kind of the equivalent of a rock star, very famous for his works, and he's hounded wherever he goes by fans. At this point in time, he's in the midst of a scandal. His wife discovered that he'd been unfaithful, and there were all sorts of rumors about an affair with his half-sister, so he had no choice but to flee the country and travel abroad. It's a collection of what? Relics of war. We know from diaries and accounts of his travels that wherever he went, he would try and collect something quite macabre. So he was a fan of skulls, of bones, anything to do with war. Innocent fascination, I assure you. The poem that Max found written by Byron, which we use at the end of the episode, talks about the Doctor. <laughs> Not literally, poetically. And, but um, as soon as she uh, pointed it out to us, we were like, you have to end the episode with this because it sounds like he's writing about the Doctor. The winds withered in the stagnant air and the clouds perished. It mentions the lines, she is the universe. And when we realized that, we thought, what a brilliant weaving together of fact and fiction. Darkness had no need of aid from them. She was the universe.